The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane by Kate DiCamillo. Chapter 9. And so Edward Tulane became Susanna. Nellie sewed several outfits for him, a pink dress with ruffles for special occasions, a simple shift fashioned out of a flower-covered cloth for everyday use, and a long white gown made of cotton for Edward to sleep in. In addition, she remade his ears, stripping them of the few pieces of fur that remained and designing him a new pair. Oh, she told him when she was done, you look lovely. He was horrified at first. He was, after all, a boy rabbit. He did not want to be dressed as a girl. And the outfits, even the special occasion dress, were so simple, so plain. They lacked the elegance and artistry of his real clothes. But then Edward remembered lying on the ocean floor, the muck on his in his face, the stars so far away, and he said to himself, what difference does it make, really? Wearing a dress won't hurt me. Besides, life in the little greenhouse with the fisherman and his wife was sweet. Nellie loved to bake, and so she spent her day in the kitchen. She put Edward on the counter and leaned him up against the flower canister and arranged his dress around his knees. She bent his ears so that he could hear well. And then she set to work, kneading dough for bread and rolling out dough for cookies and pies. The kitchen soon filled with the smell of baking bread and with the sweet smells of cinnamon and sugar and cloves. The windows steamed up, and while Nellie worked, she talked. She told Edward about her children, her daughter Lolly, who was a secretary, and her boys, Ralph, who was in the army, and Raymond, who had died of pneumonia when he was only five years old. He drowned inside of himself, said Nellie. It is a horrible, terrible thing, the worst thing, to watch somebody you love die right in front of you and not be able to do nothing about it. I dream about him most, most nights. Nellie wiped at her tears with the back of her hands. She smiled at Edward. <laughs> I suppose you think I'm daft talking to a toy, but it seems to me that you are listening, Susanna. And Edward was surprised to, to discover that he was listening. Before, when Abilene talked to him, everything had seemed so boring, so pointless. But now, the stories Nellie told struck him as the most important thing in the world. And he listened, as if his life depended on what she said. It made him wonder if some of the muck from the ocean floor had gotten inside his china head and damaged him somehow. Time out. Do you think Edward is damaged somehow from the ocean floor? How is he different from when he was with Abilene? How does he look different? Obviously, how is he different on the inside? Good thing to think about. Characters sometimes don't stay the same. In fact, actually, it's quite interesting when you see the character change. So we're going to see. Uh, uh, Edward changed throughout this story. Time back in. In the evening, Lawrence came home from the sea and there was dinner and Edward sat at the table with the fisherman and his wife. Uh, he sat in an old wooden high chair and while at first he was mortified, a high chair after all was a chair designed for babies, not for elegant rabbits, he soon became used to it. He liked being up high looking out over the table instead of staring at the tablecloth as he had at the Tulane household. He liked feeling like a part of the things. Every night after dinner, Lawrence said that he thought he would go out and get some fresh air and that maybe Susanna would like to come with him. He placed Edward on his shoulder as he had, as he had that first night when he walked him through town, bringing him home to, El to Nellie. They went outside and Lawrence lit his pipe and held Edward there on his shoulder. And if the night was clear, Lawrence said the names of the constellations one at a time, Andromeda, Pegasus, pointing at them with the stem of his pipe. Edward loved looking up at the stars and he loved the sounds of the constellation names. They were sweet in his ears. Sometimes though, staring up at, at the night sky, 
Edward remembered Pellegrina, saw again her dark and glowing eyes, and a chill would go through him. Warthogs, he would think. Witches. But Nellie, before she put him to bed each night, sang Edward a lullaby. A song about a mockingbird that did not sing, and a diamond ring that would not shine. And the sound of Nellie's voice soothed the rabbit, and he forgot about Pellegrina. Life, for a very long time, was sweet. And then Lawrence and Nellie's daughter came for a visit. Hmm. This kind of has a time out for a second. This kind of has a parallel um, narrative line, uh, the way that it works, where things are going well for Edward, and then at the end of the chapter, there's an and then. Remember with Aveline, there was and then there was the boat. And now we have, and then Lawrence and Nellie's daughter came for a visit. What do you think is going to happen next? Do you think it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing for Edward? Yeah, maybe. We'll find out. Time in. Chapter 10. There is that high chair. Lolly was a lumpy woman who spoke too loudly and who wore too much lipstick. She entered the house and immediately spotted Edward sitting on the living room couch. What's this? She said. She put down her suitcase and picked Edward up by one foot. She held him upside down. That's Susanna, said Nellie. Susanna, shouted Lolly. She gave Edward a shake. His dress was up over his head and he could see nothing already. He had formed a deep and abiding hatred for Lolly. Yeah, your father found her, said Nellie. She came up in a net and she didn't have no clothes on her, so I made her some dresses. Have you gone skinny, shouted Lolly. Rabbits don't need clothes. Well, said Nellie, her voice shook. This one seemed to. Lolly tossed Edward back on the couch. He landed face down with his arms over his head and his dress still over his face, and he stayed that way through dinner. Why have you got that old, why have you got out that old high chair, shouted Lolly. Oh, don't pay no mind, said Nellie. Your father was just gluing on a missing piece, wasn't you, Lawrence? That's right, said Lawrence, without looking up from his plate. Of course, after dinner, Edward did not go outside and stand beneath the stars to have a smoke with Lawrence. And Nellie, for the first time since Edward had been with her, did not sing him a lullaby. In fact, Edward was ignored and forgotten about until the next morning, when Lolly picked him up again and pulled his dress down away from his face and stared him in the eye. Got the old folks bewitched, don't you? said Lolly. I heard the talk in town that they've been treating you like a rabbit child. Edward stared back at Lolly. Her lipstick was a bright and bloody red. He felt a cold breeze blow through the room. Was a door open somewhere? Well, you don't fool me, she said. She gave him a shake. We'll be taking a trip together, you and me. Holding Edward by the ears, Lolly marched into the kitchen and shoved him face down in the garbage can. Ma, Lolly shouted, I'm taking the truck. I'm gonna head, out, head on out and do some errands. Oh, said came Nellie's tremulous voice. That's wonderful, dear. Goodbye, then. Goodbye, thought Edward as Lolly hauled the garbage can out to the truck. Goodbye, Nellie called again, louder this time. Edward felt a sharp pain somewhere deep inside his china chest. For the first time, his heart called out to him. It said two words. Nellie. Lawrence. <laughs>